this is the most beautiful, complex musical clock by Christopher Gould, made in about 1701. But where and to whom Christopher Gould was apprenticed has been lost in the mist of time. But he joined the Clockmakers Company in April 1682 as a free brother, described as a great clockmaker, what we nowadays would call a maker of tower clocks for buildings. A month later, in May 1682, he took his first apprentice, acquiring Andrew Clark from a fellow clockmaker brother in the clockmaker's company, Daniel Stevens. In 1697, Christopher signed the oath of allegiance to King William on the list of the clockmaker's company signatories. All freemen were required to do this, though a few members of extreme conscience, such as the Quakers, like uh, Daniel Quare, refused to sign as they would not swear oaths. Christopher soon became known for the quality of his clocks, which equaled and then even exceeded the master clockmaker of his age, Thomas Tompkin. If 300-year-old full grand sonnery clocks are rare, then musical clocks are even rarer. Christopher Gould's impressive musical clock is of eight days duration. It's eight feet, 10 and a quarter inches, which is 2,697 millimeters to the top of the central finial. It has a seconds pendulum controlled by an anchor escapement and the clock plays music on every hour followed by an hour strike. And this can be repeated at will by putting the peep cord of 14 bells with 28 hammers from the cord inside the case behind the door. Originally, other tunes were available as the pin barrel inside the movement here is removable. Unfortunately, the other barrels have been lost. The subsidiary in the break arch of the dial shows the moon's phase by a penny moon together with a lunar calendar and a double 12 hour tidal ring, which can be set for any port. The matted dial centre has a seconds ring and three ringed winding holes and a date aperture. The chapter ring is signed Christopher Gould, Londini fake it around the six engraving. The Burl Warnock case has inset banding in Kingwood and Tulipwood surrounded by fine double boxwood with an inner ebony stringing of exceptional high quality here. In spite of his prodigious horological talent, Christopher was unfortunately no businessman and he was declared bankrupt in 1706 and ended his career as an ale taster. The clockmakers company was sympathetic, appointing him as a beagle together with a pension until his death in 1718. What a sad end to a clockmaker whose talent equaled and in some clocks such as this musical clock exceeded that of Thomas Tompion, who is buried in the central part of the nave of Westminster Abbey.